Hello my dear students and welcome to my class. I am Miss Nob, your teacher for today. In this video lesson, I will introduce you to Quadratic Equation In this video lesson, we are going to Distinguish Quadratic Equation from Linear Equation Show Quadratic Equation using a variety of examples and appreciate the importance of quadratic equations in formulating real-life problems. So, what is quadratic equation? What do you mean by that? Hmm. A quadratic equation is a second-degree polynomial equation that can be written in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Okay, where our A, B, and C are real number. Again, our A, B, and C are real numbers. These are the numerical coefficients of the different parts of our quadratic equation. And another thing that you need to remember is that in this quadratic equation, the value of our A should not be equal to 0. Again, the value of our A should not be equal to 0. In this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Our ax squared here is our quadratic term. Our bx is our linear term and our c here is our constant. Understand? Okay. Now, this quadratic equation with the first term as ax squared, we can notice that our exponent there is 2. That is why quadratic equation is also termed as the second degree equation. Again, because the highest degree of the unknown variable, which is usually x, is 2. Did you get it? Okay, very good. For example, we have 3x squared plus 7x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, what do you think is the value of our a, b, and c in this equation? Okay, the value of our a in this equation is equal to positive 3. Our b here is equal to positive 7 and our c here is equal to negative 1. Now, we have 2c squared minus 5c plus 9 is equal to 0. What is the value of our a, b, and c in this equation? Okay, the value of our a in this equation is equal to positive 2, b is equal to negative 5, and the value of our c in this equation is equal to positive 9. Next, how about this equation? Is that considered as a quadratic equation? What do you think? To answer that is yes, it is still a quadratic equation and is written in its standard form. Why? It's because it has the first term x squared which is a quadratic term. We also do have a linear term but the value of our b is equal to 0. So that will be now b is equal to 0. And for clarification, the value of our a in this equation is positive 1, b is 0, and c is equal to positive 5. Do you understand? Well, that's great. Next, we have 6x squared plus 8x is equal to 0. What is the value of our a, b, and c in this equation? Very good. Our a in this equation is positive 6, b is equal to positive 8, and c is equal to 0. Again, why is it considered as a quadratic equation? Okay, it's because it has the first term 6x squared that makes it a quadratic. Very good. How about this equation? Is it a quadratic equation or not? Okay, it is a quadratic equation. However, it is not written on its standard form. So the question is, how do we transform quadratic equation in its standard form? So in this example number 1, we have 3x squared minus 5x equal to positive 4. Our target here is to transform it into its standard form. 
So as you can see, positive 4 is not on its proper location. So therefore, we need to transpose positive 4 to the both side of the equation. In transposing positive 4, we will use addition property of equality wherein we will add the inverse of positive 4 which is negative 4 on the other side minus 4. So we have now 3x squared minus 5x minus 4 is equal to 0 as the standard form of this equation. And now we can easily identify the value of our a, b, and c. The value of our a in this equation is equal to positive 3, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to negative 4. Next is we have x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 equal to positive 3. So we can notice that this equation contains parentheses that makes the equation more complicated. So in order for us to remove parentheses, we will use again the distributive property by applying the FOIL method. Are you familiar with the FOIL method? Okay, very good. We will first multiply x to x and the product is x squared. Next is x by negative 2 and the answer is negative 2x. Third is multiply 1 by x and the result is positive x. And lastly is to multiply 1 by negative 2 and the product is negative 2. So we have now x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2 is equal to positive 3. So next, we will just copy x squared then add the similar term which is the negative 2x plus x and the result is negative x. So we have now x squared minus x minus 2 equal to positive 3. So next is we will transpose positive 3 since it was not on its proper location. So we will transpose now positive 3 to the both sides of the equation on its inverse which is the negative 3. So just copy x squared minus x then combine the similar term which is negative 2 and negative 3 is equal to negative 5. So we have now x squared minus x minus negative 5 is equal to 0 as the standard form of this equation. And the value of our a, b, and c in this equation can be easily identified. The value of our a in this equation is equal to positive 1, b is equal to negative 1, and c is equal to negative 5. So let us try to apply it on our real life problem. So our problem is the length of a swimming pool is 9 meter longer than its width and the area is 100 meter squared. So based from the given, write a quadratic equation in standard form and identify the value of A, B, and C. So let us first create a model to help us solve the problem. So this is our pool and the problem involve an area. And we all know that the formula to solve an area is area is equal to length times the width. So take note that the length is described in terms of the width and that there was no exact measure given for the width. So in this case, we will represent the measure of the width as x. So if we have the width as x meters, and the length is described as 9 meters longer than its width, then we have x plus 9 meters as the length. Hence, we have now the following given. Area represented by capital A is equal to 100. Width represented by lowercase a, w is equal to x. And length represented by lowercase l which is equal to x plus 9. So from here, we just need to substitute the given to our area formula. And that is 100 is equal to x times the sum of x and 9. 
then we will just copy 100 on the left side of the equation and on the right side by applying the distributive property. We have x times x equals x squared and x times 9 equals 9x. So from here, we can already identify the quadratic, the linear, and the constant term. But what we need to do now is to apply APE to change equation into standard form. And that is sub subtracting 100 to both sides of the equation will give us 0 on the left side. And since we have nothing there to combine with negative 100 on the right side, then we have, then we have x squared plus 9x minus 100. And by reflexive property of equality, we can say that 0 is equal to x squared plus 9x minus 100 is also equal to x squared plus 9x minus 100 is equal to 0. So from here, we can easily identify the value of a, b, and c of the standard form of the quadratic equation. So therefore, we have a is equal to positive 1. And take note that if you can't see any number beside the variable, it means its coefficient is 1. B is equal to positive 9 and C is equal to negative 100. And reminder, do not disregard the sign before the number. So here is what you need to remember. Quadratic equation is a second degree polynomial equation that can be written in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0 where the values of our a, b, and c are real numbers such that your a should not be equal to 0. And another thing that you need to remember is that the equation can still be considered quadratic if it has only two terms. If it contains quadratic term ax squared like the examples that we have earlier. So that's it class. We have completed our lesson for today. Congratulations to us and see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye and thank you everyone.